Beyond the gate there was a crowd of men along the verge of the road, and of the great paved space into which all the ways to Minas Tirith ran. All eyes were turned southwards, and soon a murmur rose. There is dust away there. They are coming. Pippin and Burgil edged their way forward to the front of the crowd and waited. Horns sounded at some distance, and the noise of cheering rolled towards them like a gathering wind. Then there was a loud trumpet blast, and all about them people were shouting. Fall long, fall long, Pippin heard men calling. What do they say? he asked. Fall long has come, Burgil answered. Old fall long the fat, the lord of Los Arnach. That is where my grandsire lives. Hurrah! Here he is, good old fall long. Leading the line, there came walking a big, thick limbed horse, and on it sat a man of wide shoulders and huge girth, but old and grey bearded, yet mail clad and black helmed, and bearing a long, heavy spear. Behind him marched proudly a dusty line of men, well armed and bearing great battle axes. Grim faced they were, and shorter and somewhat swarthier than any men that Pippin had yet seen in Gondor. Fall long! men shouted, true heart, true friend, fall long. But when the men of Los Arnoch had passed, they muttered, so few, two hundreds, what are they? We hoped for ten times the number. That will be the new tidings of the Black Fleet. They're sparing only a tithe of their strength. Still, every little is a gain. And so the companies came and were hailed and cheered and passed through the gate. Men of the outlands marching to defend the city of Gondor in a dark hour, but always too few, always less than hope looked for or need asked. The men of Ringlow Vale behind the son of their lord, Devoren striding on foot, three hundreds. From the uplands of Morthond, the great Blackroot Vale, tall Duin here and his sons, Duelin and Erufin and five hundred bowmen. From the Anfalus, the Langstrand far away, a long line of men of many sorts, hunters and herdsmen and men of little villages, scantily equipped, save for the household of Golasgil, their lord. From Lamedon, a few grim hillmen without a captain, fisher folk of the Aether, some hundred or more spared from the ships, Hirluin the fair of the green hills from Pinath Gelin, with three hundreds of gallant green-clad men, and last and proudest, Imrahil, Prince of Dol Amroth, kinsman of the Lord, with gilded banners bearing his token of the ship and the silver swan, and a company of knights in full harness riding grey horses, and behind them seven hundreds of men at arms, tall as lords, grey-eyed, dark-haired, singing as they came. And that was all, less than three thousand full told. No more would come. Their cries and the tramp of their feet passed into the city and died away. The onlookers stood silent for a while. Dust hung in the air, for the wind had died and the evening was heavy. Already the closing hour was drawing nigh and the red sun had gone behind Mindoloin. Shadow came down on the city. <laughs> 